I'm listening to me. Hi, I'm back. I'm David from Electric Teaching with part two of uh, creating a, a Python code that calculates the area under a curve, uh, hoping to use this for uh, calculus projects out there. Um, let's see, where was I? Well, I actually got all the input in and it seemed to be working well. We even calculated the delta x, although I didn't test to see what it looked like. I, I'm going to do a print here in a second to see what it looks like and make sure it's accurate. But before we get started on that, I want to give you a visual of what we need to do here real quick. So a quick little calculus lesson here, a, a very quick one, please forgive me. Um, take a parabola, x squared plus 1, and what we want to do is sum up the rectangles generated by the height locked down by the left end point. The left end point. So I tried to draw rectangles in here. Let's see if I can just draw another rectangle in here. That you want to come up to, let's draw an extra one in here, up to the left end point. Okay, and then go off and make a rectangle there. And then up to the left end point, make another rectangle. Left end point, and then left end point. So what we have is we're making several rectangles here. The more rectangles you make, obviously, the closer you have to the exact answer. With an increasing curve right here, we're looking from zero to something here. With an increasing curve here, you can see that this sum will be slightly lower than the actual sum between uh, the interval A and B or on the interval A to B. All right, each one of these rectangles has a height. And don't forget, the height is the plug and chug of F of X, the function, the Y equal up here. So the first height I'm going to do if I start on the left end has got to be, if I'm running from, let's make that clear, let's go from maybe 0 to 2. Okay, And if I do that, the first thing I'm plugging and chugging for a height is F of 0. Okay, The next one I plug and chug will be 1 delta X over. The one after that will be 2 delta X's plus my starting point of zero. It looks weird to leave the zero in there. It's more of I'm showing you that you start at that left end point no matter what it is. It could be zero, it could be negative something. Now all we have to do is just calculate heights, add up, or I mean, excuse me, calculate areas and then add them up. So this is what the program will basically do. It's going to look at each one of these rectangles and it's going to say that the area is equal to the height, the height, so that's the f of x times our delta x that we've already calculated. And then what we need to do is we need to calculate each one of them and continually, so I'll use a summation symbol, but sum up all those little areas. We need to sum them up for each time we loop through. And that's why I wrote a loop is needed here. So that's the idea behind how I'm going to do this. Let's go back to the code. Okay, and what we want to do is, is I'm going to first print. I'm going to do a print command here. Let's actually put a little comment here. I'm going to print the uh, results here. So let's just do that. And I'm going to use a print command. The print command will basically print to the exact same location where it asks the questions on raw input, which is the shell, the shell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go print. And with the print command, I'm going to put in um, a single quote, a single quote to put in some text here. And I'm going to say your, excuse me, or the, yours or the, it's your choice here. Remember, green text is anything you want to put in. Your width is space quote comma meaning i'm going to add in something else here i'm going to put something else here okay and i'm going to type in delta x delta delta x whoops let's see delta x and then see if this works it should print the green text and then it should print whatever value delta x is so let's just see if this works real quick i'm going to do F5 and save it. I'm going to just give it X equation. I'm going to say from 0 to, oh, I don't know, 2. And let's say a number that I can make sure it works. Let's say 4 rectangles. 4 rectangles should be a half each then. And it worked. It says that your width is 0.5. Perfect. Great. We know that's working. Let's go back to the code now. So the next thing I want to print is I want to print up. I want to print up the quote, single quote, the left end, left end sum, that's calculus kind of talk, the left end sum, in other words, rectangles generated by the left end heights, so the left end sum is what we usually call it, the left end sum is going, it is, and then space, and this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a close quote, comma, and I'm going to call out a new function that we haven't created yet, so I'm going to call out a function that I'll title left end parentheses all functions have parentheses and i'm going to pass variables to it 
I'm going to pass the things it needs to generate the left end. So what things do we need to generate the left end? I need to know how many rectangles we're doing. So that's how many times I'll loop through, basically. So I'm going to pass that variable. And then I'm going to go comma. I'm going to pass the starting point. I hope the words left end don't get confusing here. If I was smarter, I'd probably use different words here, but we're going to go with it. In fact, we can. Let's do that. Left end, capital sum. Everybody get that in class right here? Left end, capital sum. I'm, I'm teaching some people right now, too, at the same time here. All right, so we got the left end point. What else do we need? Do we need the right end point? For the left end sum, it's always, come back to the quick little visual here, it's always the left end plus the delta. That's all we're using. We never even touch the right end, and the right end is used for delta, but it's already calculated. So we don't need to pass right end, but we need to give it the delta x. So we're going to pass three variables to this program. We're going to pass three variables to this program. Now let's write this code. Get a couple extra returns backspace backspace <clears throat> get back to the main left side because we're going to start a new code a new function excuse me a new subroutine is one way to say it and we're going to what do we name it left end got to match it perfectly left end sum parentheses i could lay out the exact same variables in left end delta x but i like them sometimes to look a little bit different uh, so I'm just going to put num for n. So please make sure we understand this. If n is 100, then that means when this program opens up, the, the number 100 is passed from n to this new variable called num. So that's how it'll work there. Num will be known because we're passing it from this call out here. So we're going to put num, and I think I'm just going to do le for left n, and I think I'm just going to do dx for delta x and make it so I don't have to type as much. dx. Close parentheses, and I got an extra space in there. Get rid of that. And now let's put in a colon and hit return. This is actually a very quick, easy little routine. It won't take us but a few lines here. We need to have some sort of way of summing it up. So I'm going to make a new variable called left sum. Left sum. Let's use a couple. Let's use, I'm going to do a camelback style. So I'll do the middle variable capitalized or the middle word capitalized on that one word variable. So left sum, we need to start it at zero. We need to start it at zero. So it starts at zero. In fact, actually, since these often are decimal numbers, I prefer it to be 0.0, .0 so that it doesn't assume only integers are going to be used. So this way it's a float automatically, or in mathematics, a rational number, a number that can be made into decimals, basically. Um, let's see. Now we just need to loop. We need to do a for loop. For I, this is a typical for loop in Python, 4i in range. Notice the colors are coming out when I type that in. The, the Python is recognizing what I want. And notice that Python is very friendly. It's reminding you that you have to use a start, a stop, and a step if you want. Okay, And so that's what we intend to do. With Py early versions of Python, you only have to put in the first of the attributes there. So I'm only going to put in num. It does accept other ones, and so I'll tell you straight out, if you're in 3.1, I think maybe 2.7 and 3.1 Python, you got to put a comma there before you close the parentheses. So for us, because we're in an older Python, let's not, we're just going to put in the close parentheses. It's a loop that we need to nest in the instructions, so I'm putting colon and Python automatically indents for me which is great. No less syntax, and it automatically indents. That's why I like to teach in Python. Okay, real simple. We need to calculate, <clears throat> excuse me, we need to calculate which x we're at. Which x we're at. Remember back to my notes, we need to plug and chug the left end plus no delta x's. The, the left end plus one delta x. The left end plus, you ready? I delta x because i starts at zero because i starts at zero and goes up as many rectangles as we told it to then that's what we're going to do so i'm going to give it x value the x value and you need to make it x for a python pro a, a python library command called eval to work it needs to be x here so we're going to say x equals x equals um what did I say? The left end point plus I star 
dx. Since i starts at 0, the very first thing it's going to do is the left endpoint. And then the next time it'll loop through, it'll be left in with 1 delta x, and then et cetera, et cetera, 2 delta x's, 3 delta x's. I hope that makes sense. If that does make sense, that's beautiful, because then you're really getting the idea of coding, um, especially with loops in here. Let's see. The next thing we need to do is we need to calculate the height based on this x. So I need to plug and chug, like I said, maybe 0, 0 plus the delta, 0 plus 2 delta. So what we do is I'm going to call it height. I'm going to just call it h. So h is equal to neat little program trick called eval. Eval. It's a neat Python trick. Okay. Um, it'll evaluate any function. I'm going to put in eq. Eq is simply a bunch of sent a bunch of text that the that the uh, computer recognizes. But in that text, okay, there are uh, there is an x that it can plug and chug values into. So hopefully this works. As I recall, this should work pretty well. We'll find out shortly here. Okay, now we need to take our left sum, our left sum, which is zero, and we need to add on our h times x. We need to add on. I could use something called plus equals in Python, which is a shortcut of adding on to, but I like to really make sure it's a good learning moment, so I'm going to retype the word left sum. So left sum is equal to itself plus the new h times x, the h times x. That's it. Get out of the loop. Back up one space. Right now, the variable left sum is, is basically in limbo. It's sitting out there. So what I'm going to need to do is I, oops, I need to type in the word or the command return. In other words, when this comes back, what are we returning from where it was called out up above? Well, we're returning the left sum, capital S in the middle for me. I don't know how you did yours. So what? just to understand what this does, this will print left sum is, it'll go run the code, loop through here in milliseconds, basically. And then when it comes back, this call out right here is basically the variable that I'm returning. And the variable I'm returning, hopefully, is the sum. I think this will work. Only one way to find out, F5. F5 is a nice little shortcut on Windows machines. Hit return. It's asking for an equation. I'm going to do something that I'm very familiar with to make sure this works. Like, for instance, my equation will be y equal 2. So I'm going to make a rectangle here and ask for the area of the rectangle. The left end will be 0. The right end will say maybe 4. Okay, and let's put in 20 rectangles, 20 rectangles, and let's see what happens here. Hit return, and I have an error. I have an error. So I'm trying to scroll down here so you can see the error, and the error says that I've done something wrong in left end sum on 928, and it doesn't like the range number I used. It doesn't like the range number. It says integer end argument expected and got a string. Oh, in other words, it thought this was text and not an integer. It got a string. String is word for um, basically a bunch of symbols, but not, a, not interpreted as a quantity. It's just a bunch of symbols like letters and numbers and other things. So I think I know how to fix this. Back here, we took the number in. We took the number in, and we passed that number in as is. Just like down here where we floated in, we need to do something like that. In fact, all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make n be floated automatically. So I'm going to say n equal float of n. And then down over here, technically this is kind of a redundant statement, floating of n that is already floated. So I should be able to just change that to n now and not lose that. So the same way we did an integer with the input of a and b, we needed to do it within. Let's try running it again, F5, see if this works. Okay, my text is off the screen here. Sorry, it's a little bit off your screen um, on the video, but I am putting in uh, the same equation, 2, from 0 to 2, and let's do 4. I could do as many rectangles as I want, and I got another error. Wow, I'm not doing too well today. So. Just so you know, if you're watching this video, I don't mind making mistakes because I feel you need to learn how to fix mistakes on your own and not wait for somebody else to fix them for you. So I think it's healthy to watch my mistakes and learn from my mistakes. 
It's always nicer to learn from other people's mistakes. Uh, global name EQ not found. Did I not pass the EQ? I did not, or I did not globalize it. So that's, oh, that's what we need to do. So I could pass EQ here, but we're going to be using EQ in several subroutines in this video sequence. So right now I'm going to type in way at the top to global the variable EQ wherever it is used. To global the variable EQ wherever it's used. Okay. Cross your fingers. Could be another error here. Who knows? Um, off the screen down here, it is asking me for another equation. I'm doing the same thing again. I'm going to do two, zero, two, and let's do four rectangles again. Okay. Got another error. Boy, I'm having a lot of trouble here. Oh, it was a capital issue. It was a capital issue. And maybe some of you actually caught that. So again, forgive me for the errors, but I do believe it's a, it's a good idea to take a look at what errors I get so that you can understand them when you get them and you make your own code. See left sum, capital S, right here? Left sum, not capital S. That's why it's always good to be consistent with the way you do your variables. That way you don't make mistakes. For instance, I did camelback here, but I didn't do camelback way up here at left end and right end. I am not being consistent. Learn from that mistake. F5, trying it again. All right, same numbers. Two, zero, two, and maybe four rectangles. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's see. I have an error, I think. How big should that be? Because I don't think the left sum is six. It should not be six. Let's see. I have a rectangle that's two high and two across. Doesn't matter how many trapezoids I use, what the area should have been. Four. So I'm going to pause the video here real quick and see if I can track down why I got too much of an area. Hi, I'm back uh, to you. It was a split second there, but I did pause the video to double check things. So I want to show you how I problem solved this. Um, double check. We did change the in to integer there. I think we did that on one of the errors. I changed the float back. That was a problem. So I do want the integer version of it here, but I still need it to be a float of in there. So in is integer, but right here I'm dividing by the float of it, which is just putting a decimal, and if it's 0.0, it's 0.0. It just makes it so that delta x can be small decimals, which, by the way, was the error. Down here, I, what I did to test it is I printed my x, my h, and my left sum to see how it was building as it went through the loop. Always use a print command and take a look at what the variables are doing. Um, now that I've done that, I'm going to delete that, and I'll tell you straight out where the problem was is that I kept multiplying by x. So if I kept multiplying by x, x got bigger and bigger and bigger as we went through the loop. And we're not supposed to have different sized rectangles. We're supposed to basically, as I'm trying to draw in this illustration, we're supposed to have the same size rectangles, the same size rectangles. So I need to make this dx here, dx. All right, run module. I'm going to put in, um, let's put in x, x, and I'm going to say the endpoint is 0, and I'm going to have it go out to 8, and so that should be a triangle that's half the rectangle um, of uh, an 8 by 8, so let's see if this works. Um, let's do, oh, let's do 20 rectangles here. You can't see it off the screen, and let's take a look at what we got. So um, if it was an 8 by 8, it would have been 64 and half of 64. Just to give you a quick visual, I just did this, y equal x, and what I'm doing is going from 0 to 8, and therefore that's 8. So this area should be half of 8 times 8. So this should be 32. Since we're getting left end, we are getting smaller sums, less than sums on an increasing graph, and that's why we got close to 32 or 30.4. One of the ways I like to play with this in the calculus sense is to try other other ones so let me just run the program one more time here and try like what happens if i do a hundred or even a thousand rectangles so f5 i'm going to put in x again it's off the screen i apologize zero eight and this time let's do a hundred rectangles and i want to show you that it went from 30.4 in our one result to 31.68. In other words, we're getting closer and closer. The limit in calculus, it's the limit. The limit as we let n go to infinite rectangles 
will be the area 32 in that case. All right, next time, the next video, we'll show you how to do the right sum, and then what we'll do is for the trap sum, we'll do a combination of both of them. I'm David from Electric Teaching. Thank you for listening, and sorry this went so long. So last